Silver. It is Wednesday, April 4th. I just wanted to say a quick hello to all new viewers and a great welcome back to all returning viewers. So if you tuned in last time and decided to come back, I really do appreciate it. So thank you to those that have that you know decided to stay with me during my real talk segment at the end of last episode. I know it was something different and it sounded sometimes like I was bambling, bubbling and bambling and whatever the word is. <laughs> It, it was definitely something different, um, but I really do appreciate you sitting, coming by and just sitting there and listening, if you did. Um, I honestly won't do the real talk segments all the time, maybe every once in a while. So since the last time we met, there's actually been a lot going on in my neck of the woods. It's been a month, as they say. Um, so grab your drink of choice, your crafting, and away we go. As always, I will start off with a quick cuppa. Um, this time it's actually my first cup, first cup of coffee a day. Um, this one's actually a brand that M MDI actually picked up at work. So let's see how it goes. Because <laughs> I'm not really a fan of all those brands. But anyway, here we go. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> it's better than I thought it was. But then again, I doctored it up with lots of sugar, so whatever. I can't stop drinking it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, ooh, like I said, first cup of the coffee of coffee a day. It takes a bit for me to wake up. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna put the cup down now. So if you hear that, um, <laughs> so let's move on to my favorite things. Quite frankly, every time I get together with my parents or I get to get together with MDI's parents, it's kind of a big deal. Mostly because, well, we don't do it very often and I'm so sorry, mom and family, that, you know, <laughs> that we don't get together as much as we probably should. Um, but anyway, the reason I mention this is that we did get together on the 31st for a very kind of quick dinner um, at Sliders, actually, which is a local chain to us that we absolutely love. I'm sure you've heard of their famous wings because they do a lot of wings, a lot of different wing varietals. We had honestly so much fun. It really is always good to get together with family. Especially since it's, you know, been quite a month or so since we got together. Whoops. Um, at the end of the night, my mom actually decided that she wanted to give me um, what is what she's calling our Easter bag that she had gotten actually for both MDI and I. Um, when I told people at work about it the next morning, they thought it was pretty cute that she still insists on doing that. I honestly really do appreciate it. Don't get me wrong, because sugar. <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Mom, and Dad, too. I know it was mostly Mom, <laughs> but thank you. And yes, um, hi, Mom. <laughs> she does listen sometimes, at least to this beginning part. <laughs> the knitting, I don't know about so much. But anyway, let's move on to more of my favorite things. I actually have gotten a few shipments over the past month since we last talked, especially. The first one that came in the mail, or came in the post, so to speak, because <laughs> it wasn't actually the mail. But anyway, I digress. The first thing that came in was my Wink shipment. Um, there was a lot, a lot of white wine in that one, so that's good, because it's kind of my jam, yo. The first one that came in was a 2016 Matchlock Cabernet Sauvignon. Wow, say that ten times fast, yo. Um, the second was that was in there was a Pacifica Chardonnay, which I've actually had before. It is absolutely awesome, and I cannot wait to try to have this particular varietal again. And the last two bottles that were in there actually were the same 
um, and I've had them before. It's a 2016, sorry, Honey Beast White Blend. There was two of them. I cannot wait. So another bit of enabling that came in the mail this past month was from the grocery girls themselves. They have these wonderful pins, enamel pins that they that they sell in their Etsy shop now every once in a while. And they did manage to put up a, a, but a couple of them actually. One is one with their logo and one has Sock Talk. Yes, part of one of their segments because they're absolutely, absolutely love doing socks. And so they made a segment for it. Ah, I absolutely love these two pins, yo. I cannot wait to put them on one of my bit, one of my bags to work with. Oh, I'll have to show you. Another thing that came in was actually a new to me dyer, um, Red Bird Yarn Studios. I am participating in a um, what do you call it? a self striper, K A L for with the Nick Girls. So I was like, okay, let me try something new that I haven't used before. Redbird is definitely one of them. Um, what came in the mail and what I bought was the Simple Sock self striping. It's 460 yards of fingering weight yarn. Um, oh, awesome. Um, the colorway name is Ember. I mean, do you see the picture? Like, can you blame me for wanting this one? I mean, you can't, right? Like, it, it just had to come home with me. Okay, so the last thing that actually did come in the mail was my Yarn, o yarn Over Club shipment. Um, so you know. Here be spoilers, so you know. All right, if you are part of the club and have not received your shipment, I suggest, you know, tuning out for a while, or you can even skip ahead. I'll put the timestamp below. Okay, you gone? Hey, don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, this month, y'all, was Firefly inspired. Now, I'm going to preface it by saying that I have never actually watched Firefly, so I don't quite get some of the references that came in the package, but I'm sure they're spot on because the rest of them have. But I promise I will get there. I mean, it is on Netflix, I think. I, I do know enough about the series um, based on other podcasters who have actually knit up, say for example, the Jane hat, to know that a lot of the goodies in this package do match the series perfectly. So that's a good, that's a good sign, right? Because that's what they're going for with this geeky yarn club. Um, the first thing that was in the package was an, a skein of Apple Tree Knits plush fingering in the Firefly gradient, y'all. It is super jane-tastic with the red and the orange and yellow oh absolutely gorgeous guys so also what arrived was a nice tea that is also firefly themed um i actually can't remember the what they actually titled it on the little packaging but i will have a picture and i will put it down below so you can see that sorry i know bad podcast or we're, we're off to a good start right Another thing that was in there was the uh, was actually a pretty new to, to to me thing was a yarn over truck notebook. Honestly, I already made plans for this one. Um, I'll explain more about that later on, um, maybe in a later episode <laughs> once I have it all set up and ready to go. So that's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> Um, another thing that was actually in the package was the usual two patterns, one for crochet and one for knitting. I'll actually, I'll have them all added to my Ravelry library so that way you can see the, you know, see them for yourselves. But the first one is the Term Turbulent Awake Shawl by Miriam Felton. Oh, I absolutely love, love, love this one. I might be casting that on, but... I don't know for sure yet. Um, the knitting pattern was actually the, was called My Autumn Flower by Karina Ferguson. Again, I love this one. I don't know which one I would prefer, <laughs> prefer to knit out of the two. <laughs> I mean, would knit? No, one's crochet and one's knitting. What the heck am I talking about? Like I said, I must have more coffee in my system. Hold on. <laughs> okay. 
much better now that I have coffee in my system again. Let's move on to FOs. Yes, I finished a few things this month, y'all. <laughs> um, the first thing I finished was what I am calling simply March's DVD socks. Um, this is actually for the Desert Vista um, yarn club thing that she's got going on Ugh, all year long. I absolutely love it. So I did use the Toe Up Socks of the Difference by Wendy D. Johnson pattern. I'm also using um, Desert Vista Dye Works uh, on their Visa, Visa base, a colorway called Babushka. I absolutely love this color. I could not stop working on it as evidenced by, I think I finished the first sock in like two days and then the second sock in like three days, but later in the month because I wanted to space it out and I loved that colorway so much. Um, but yeah, so I knit this on a size US 1 um, on a 9 inch circular for most of the sock. And for the toes, heels, and cuffs, I actually did use a pair of 16 inch circulars mostly because I am horrible and absolute rubbish at doing ribbing on a circular as of yet. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> but anyway, the next thing that I did finish this month was what I am calling simply Waffles Rock. Waffles Rock, yo. The pattern that I did use on this one was actually a new to me pattern called the Blueberry Waffle Socks by Sandy Turner. Oh, I absolutely love this. It's a simplistic pattern, but I was able to fly, fly through. Um, it's actually the first time I was able to do a patterning sock actually in the car. <laughs> so that's always something. Um, but anyway, the pattern that, like I said, the pattern that I used was the Blueberry Waffle Sock. Definitely new to me. I will probably find a way to use it again. <laughs> Knowing me, that will be a re-knit pattern for me. Um, okay. And so I did use a the Bounce Base um, by Fiber Nymph Dye Works in the Rockabilly Bride colorway. Oh, I love the combination of pink and black and, and a little bit of white. It's amazing. I Like I said, I absolutely love it. Sorry. And I did use a um, a pair of five uh, Carbons DPMs in, this, in size one. And then for, once I got down past the patterning, because I'm not really a fan of having patterning on the top of my foot. Most of the time it's in, um, you know, so and I wanted to have them as winter socks. And the boots that I have do not really yield well to patterning on the top of the socks. Anyway. I digress about that. I did end up switching over to a uh, US 9 circular to the foot, so they went a little bit faster. Um, so yes, the last thing that I did manage to finish this month was actually um, my washcloths for the month of March. So four of them. Um, I am using, as per the use, I am using Grandma's Favorite Dishcloth by Ruth Slate. Um, this, this month I did use, uh, I, well, I made one in sage green and then two in black currant. And then I actually did a combination of those two colorways for the last one. Cause yes, knitter is going to try to get rid of all her yarn, right? <laughs> that is the reasoning behind the whole washcloth phenomena thingy that I'm working on, right? Okay, let's move on to works in progress. Now, I've kind of been a bad knitter. I have not finished much, but I've started a lot more. <laughs> um, well, as you do with the monthly sock yarn club, well, sock club that I am doing with Desert Vista Dye Works, I did start my April socks. So I'm simply calling this project April DVD socks for ease of access and easy way to find them on my project page. Um, this month is also going to be the Toe Up Socks of the Difference by Wendy D. Johnson, so you know. Um, I am going to be using a the Viso Base, again, with, for Desert Vista Dye Works in the colorway Poodle Skirt. I have to say, this is another pink and black 
but I love, love, love the way that they differ from the last socks that I did. Um, this month I am going to be using, again, the size US 1 in the 9 inch circulars and then the 16 inch circulars for the toes, heels, and cuffs. Because it seems to be a very good balance in a way of doing that for me, right? Um, this is actually being housed in my Exploding TARDIS bag. Um, I have to tell you, I don't have the tag on this one that I've had it, you know, especially since I've had it so long, so I don't really remember who it's from. I'm so sorry. I know. Bad podcaster. Um, I will actually include a picture of it in the show notes so that way you can see it for yourselves. Um, and like I said, anything that I do say I'm going to link in my show notes is actually going to be at www.silverstreamlandpodcast.com. Um, that way you can find that and the link will actually be below the video as well. So I did finish another thing or sorry, start another thing. You guys, I am simply calling this pattern all the things. Um, this is actually going to be my April entry into the, um, the, 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 wow. This is actually going to be my April entry into the stripey sock KAL that's going on in the knit girls podcast thread. <laughs> wow. Words. Anyway, um, the pattern that I'm using is actually a CC pattern. It's <laughs> It's the socks that she created for her uh, GPKP uh, uh, get together that she did back in 2016. Like I said, if you want the name of the pattern, I am going to link it in the show notes and everything else too. This month I am going to be using a Regia self striper by Arnie and Carlos called Tin. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's very patterny. And that's why, hence why the pattern name, because it's pattern on pattern and it's absolutely gorgeous and it just works for me. It just plain out does it for me. Um, so for this one, I am actually going to be using a size one and a half, um, which is a 2.5 millimeter Addy turbo sock needles. Um, they're two 16 inch circulars. Um, I have realized recently that that pair is actually 2.5. So 2.5 millimeter has actually been on the heels, toes, and cuffs of all the socks that I've been casting on that I said, hey, we're a size one. They're actually closer to a size one and a half US. Guys, wow. Things that you notice when you're just staring at your needles, right? Because <laughs> who does that anymore, right? Anyway, um, this sock is actually being housed in my Stained Glass Beauty and the Beast bag by Molly Klein Designs. Ugh. Like I said, I love this bag. I will use this probably until the end of time if I can. Because <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, yes, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Now, the next thing that I actually cast on was not a sock. It was actually a shawl. Simply, I'm calling it Jody. We're podcasting after a uh, it's somewhat of a meme from on the grocery girls. Um, if you don't watch them, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go by and give them a shot. They're amazing, amazing ladies. Um, so in case you couldn't figure out, the name of the pattern on this one was the Jody by Hohe Lakatelli. Um, I am using three colors of nice and knit fingering white yarn. The first one is driftwood that I'm going to be using vineyard, which is actually a purple and canal, which is a, which is a blue, blue variegated yarn. I absolutely love these colors. I saw these at the knit night and I said, yep, this is perfect for the shawl. <laughs> um, I am using a size U S seven, um, on a 24 inch marbles needles until I find a larger cable <laughs> and then it'll probably change because I only have one size seven. How did that happen, yo? I have no idea. Um, this is actually being housed in, in basically what I'm calling the orange gothic bag by the knitting broomstick, or knitted broomstick, guys. I absolutely love this bag. <laughs> I can't wait to go back to that project because of that bag. And then the second, the next thing that I did cast on was another shawl. I am simply calling. I literally can't even. With, of course, a smiley face at the end. Um, if you don't know the reference, um, it is something that Tracy 
um, from the grocery girls also says quite a bit. Um, and the pattern that I'm using on this one was actually simply called Tracy by oh, Hila Catelli. Now, I could not cast on the Jody without casting on the Tracy at the same time because I love both of those ladies. I could not choose which one I wanted to work on first, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> um, but that aside, I am using um, a Blue Moon Fiber Art Socks at Rock lightweight colorway called KMBFLA. Um, if you don't know what that means, you probably could Google it. Um, I'm also going to say it aloud. So if you have little ones ears around, like little, 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 you know, the impressionable ones that, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, it stands for Kiss My Big Fat Lavender. <clears throat> and then the second colorway that I'm using on that shell is the All About Yarn Sparkle, Sparkle Socks. Sparkle sock, yeah. And then the colorway is called GGK Turns 5. This is the colorway that Dami and Cece actually um, have for, had their had for their fifth anniversary, potiversary colorway. That kit, absolutely loved this color. I was looking for the best color to, to um, add that to in a two color shawl for so long. And I have found it. I have found it, y'all. <laughs> I am knitting this on a size US 6, uh, which is a 36 inch marble circs. Because as you do. <laughs> um, this one is actually being housed in my Jack Skellington uh, bag by Molly Klein Designs. It's kind of too big for it, but shh, don't tell me that. <laughs> I'm going to try for as long as I possibly can to get into that awesome bag as well. All right, and the last thing that I did cast on was what I am calling pumpkin spice all the time. Um, I literally just started the second skein of yarn. I am just past the the separation for the sleeve, probably by about an inch, if that. And then I realized I don't know if I have the right size cast on based on the number of stitches that it requires me to be at um, before doing the rest of the stockinette body. Um, if you all need to know, I'm a 52 inch bust, so I was going to do the 51 inch size. Um, the Based on the number of stitches and my gauge, I guess I'm a little bit off. I thought it might be fine. Um, the pattern itself, which is the Harvest Cardigan by Tin Can Knits, calls for a worsted or a sport weight yarn, um, so a little bit bulkier. I am actually using DK yarn, and I did not do a gauge swatch. I know, I know, I know. I should totally be hitting my hands for that one. Um, so if you hadn't guessed, I am pretty much calling this one a knitting, a knitting attack, to be honest. Uh, yay for me for not reading the directions and just assuming things were going to be okay and that they would block out. Um, I'm going to try to do maybe another inch away from the, um, the sleeve separation. And then I will unpick the, the sleeve cap, capity, capity, <laughs> the sleeve cap that I've created with one side and just try it on. And if I can get it to fit and it looks fine, then I will continue. If not, I'm going to be actually ripping it back and actually casting on a larger size to account for the DK. <sighs> just in case you're wondering. Anyway, um, so what DK yarn am I using? Uh, yes, I am using Barocco Vintage DK in the colorway pumpkin. Yes, hence the title. Um, using a size US8, which is a on a 32 inch marble circs. Ugh, love this, guys. I love this. Uh, and this one's actually being housed in my blue TARDIS bag that I have from the Knitted Brimstick. Ugh, absolutely, absolutely love this bag. I, like I said, I'm, it's a common theme, but I really do like this bag. Um, it's A, very geeky, and it's very usable and very deep so that I can get a sweater in there. Um, including the two skeins of yarn that I'm, I was planning on bringing with me somewhere that I'll explain later. Anyway, um, I did get quite a bit of love on some older projects this time around too. Um, the first <laughs> I am calling Rhapsody in Socks. 
Um, this again was the Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy G. Johnson. I used a Lolo Did It everyday sock colorway called Bohemian Rhapsody. Ugh. Because honestly, it was the title, not so much the colorway <laughs> and what color it was, but it was actually the name of <laughs> that got me because I love me some queen, y'all. Anyway, um, I mean, I'm knitting this on a size US 2, which is a 2.75 millimeter, nine inch circulars. Um, this is actually for a holiday present. So yeah, um, I am actually this is being housed in my stained glass Zelda taught by uh, Slipstitch Studios. I've had this bag for a little bit, but I absolutely, I absolutely love it for using socks in, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, it's absolutely gorgeous. The next thing that did get a little bit of love is what I am newly calling, math being a beep, not while you're sparkle rich. <laughs> um, the pattern that I'm using on this one is CC's Vanilla Cappuccino Socks by CC Almond. Oh, like I said, it's such a simple pattern, but totally, totally worth it. I absolutely love looking at it, yo. Um, the colorway that I have is actually um, opal. It's their opal. It's their funny base, which is very sparkly, very awesome. Um, I am going to butcher this name because I don't speak German. Um, I think it's a hater. H-E-I-T-E-R. I'll put it down below. Um, if I am mispronouncing that, I am so sorry. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm sure I'm going to be talking about these socks sooner. I have gotten in the mindset that I probably should <laughs> give it to them, to, give them to their intended recipient sooner rather than later. Yeah. But yeah, I am knitting this on a size US 1. Uh, on two 16 inch circular method. Um, right now, <laughs> since I am using my 16 inch circulars that I on another project that's actually they're being housed on a pair of DPNs for now. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is actually being housed in my Hocus Pocus bag by Slip Stitch Studios. I absolutely love this. Like I said, this is one of my newer Slip Stitch Studios bags and I don't know where it was in my life before that. <laughs> Alrighty. So the next couple things that I did get a little bit of love on are both blankets. Um, one is sort of new um, as of last time. It was what I called simply spiked punch, uh, sorry, spiked punch basket blanket. I got a little distracted by the project I'm working on. Can you tell? Anyway, um, I am knitting on the basket weave bank baby blanket. Um, it's actually my own pattern. Um, you can find this on Ravelry. I'll include um, links below on the video as well as in the down bar, um, just so you have that. And it'll also be in the show notes as the huge. Um, but anyway, the yarn that I'm using is a Miss Babs uh, Yowza colorway called Spiked Punch. It's very purple and very awesome. And it's it's not very, very variegated, but it is, and I absolutely, absolutely love this gorgeous color. Um, I have four skeins of it. I'm thinking I'm only going to get through three, so hopefully the last skein I can actually make something for myself out of it, because I get to be a selfish knitter after knitting for somebody, right? <laughs> anyway, um... I did literally just move this onto a size US 9 Susan Bates straight needles that I kind of inherited from somebody, don't remember who, but they are 14 inch, uh, 14 inch, 14, 14 inch straight needles. I haven't knit with straight needles in a while, guys, so um, yeah, <laughs> my hands kind of hurt from those, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this one is actually being housed in my large part uh, purple TARDIS bag by Slip Stitch Studios because, you know, you need a, at least a sweater size bag for that one, right? <laughs> All right. And the other blanket that did get a little bit of love, actually, this, um, this time around, love, actually. Yo, there's a movie title in that, right? <laughs> um, can you tell my coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet? Um, but yes, anyway, the second thing that did get a little bit of love blanket wise was what I call, okay, I give, is a sock yarn blanket. And yes, as the name implies, 
I did use a, I'm actually using a the 10 stitch blanket pattern by Frankie Brown. Um, there are a fair amount of colorways that are going to be going into this blanket. Um, I am not going to leave the list them all off because there's quite a few and quite frankly some of the ones that have are using are mostly just little scraps um right now i'm up to about 20 grams and and under until i get a little bit bigger like i said i'm trying to use up scraps first <laughs> sorry Woo. i am using a size us5 carbon straight needles as well i love i like i said these straight needles i absolutely love they don't feel like they're your straight needles they feel like a pair of dpns that are a little bit longer so there's that. Um, I'm also using what I'm simply calling the large fabric bag that I got from uh, the knitted broomstick. Uh, it's perfect. It is perfect for a sock point, a sock, a sock yarn blanket like this, kind of like cozy memories blanket. I think that's what she called it. It was a, uh, the cozy memories blanket style, but it's absolutely gorgeous guys. I, I can't stop staring at it. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> all right so the last thing that did get a little bit of love um <laughs> since the last time we spoke uh was the worsted body uh, worsted body worsted boxy by hohila Catelli. i am simply calling this we've got mars on the horizon now this is on a size us8 um marble circular now, as I mentioned before, I am also using the 36 or 32 size uh, cable on another sweater. So I have, luckily I'm up to the, um, the, the back panel of it. So I can put that on a site on a 16 inch circular needles. It's not comfortable to knit with, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I am doing it. Um, anyway. Uh, I, this is actually being housed in the bigger on the inside TARDIS bag that I have um, from Addicted to Sock Knitting, mostly because, well, quite frankly, TARDIS. <laughs> okay, so now for a new segment, I guess you can say segment, um, I'm calling this simply Silver is a Hooker. Now, be aware, I'm only going to use this one, this category once. Um, yeah, <laughs> mostly because, quite frankly, I can always put what I'm working on directly into the whip and FO sections going forward. But I got this category stuck in my head at one point and I just could not get it out. So, now, what does this segment actually mean? Well, in case you ha don't follow me on Instagram, I now am a crocheter. In fact, I'm actually working on something, one of my, F my works in progress right now. Well, actually, it is my only work in progress crochet-wise. But anyway, um, I did practice my crochet on a granny square um i simply on my project page called my first granny square spelled granny spelled g-r-a-n-n-i-e because apparently i needed that anyway um it's a simple uh, granny square pattern that i found uh, a video on and i kind of followed along to kind of practice it is super wobbly guys like look at the photo you'll know for yourself <laughs> You've got to see it. Um, my intention was to find a way to use up all of my red heart scraps, I guess you can say, from projects from over the years. Because they're city, it's pretty much sitting in a bin up in my craft room of just random balled up yarn. Um, but anyway, I know that this first one that I used for that square was uh, a, the royal colorway, which is a, a very deep, dark blue. Now on that square, I did use a size H hook, which is a 5.5.0 millimeter crochet hook. Yes. Let me tell you, now doing crochet, I'm actually thinking about just switching over to the, met the metric and just calling it good instead of trying to find U.S. sizes that match. Because as you do, anyway. Um. <laughs> The thing that I alluded to earlier, the thing that I am actually working on right now, 
is what I am calling stripey heart. Now, as I mentioned before, I am very much trying to use up my red heart scraps, mostly because they weren't doing anything else for me besides sitting in my yarn stash. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a scrap-tastic style blanket. Um, the pattern that I'm simply following is um, was written down by uh, Lucy of Attic 24. Uh, I think it's a podcast. It's called the Granny Stripes Granny Stripes Blanket. Very simple. Just keep going back and forth, back and forth, using all as much yarn or as little yarn as you would like. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm using miscellaneous red heart scraps. Um, most of them had the ball bands long gone. Um, what I'll try to do is I'll try to keep up with what I'm using directly in my project page. Um, I can't guarantee it's all going to be there. Um, mostly because when I use a color, I had intended on getting them right out of my stash when I finished them at the time. But yeah, like I said, a lot of these are different scraps. Like I would have two different color two different yellow colors and I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two so I'd be like okay well let's not take them out of my stash until I know for certain so until the end of the project I'm probably going to try to match them up as best as I possibly can yeah um the ones toward the end of the blanket are probably going to end up being the ones with the label so those will be easy but uh wish me luck (laughs) y'all I didn't start this very, very, very long ago, and I am quite a bit into the blanket. I love it. It's um pretty much covering my lap right now. So, yeah. Um, oh yeah, I didn't mention I am actually using a uh, size K or ten, which is actually like a ten and a half, I think. Wow, didn't know I actually had a US size anyway um it looks like it's actually a 6.5 millimeter hook so you know i had to i had to check guys because i heaven knows i should put it in my podcast notes right (laughs) um all right i've rambled about this blanket far far too long like i said i am working on a yellow color right now but that's how the magic is made right (laughs) Um, I have a progress keeper on, um, so what you're seeing is actually the very beginning of, very beginning of the blanket in the picture. There will be more next week, trust me, ever since I took the pictures, which was yesterday, by the way, I've done quite a bit of progress. (laughs) Anyway, let's move on to Back to the Future. So I have a few things that have actually caught my eye that I want to try to cast on soon it might not be for a while mostly because well I have a few projects on the needles and and hooks guys I don't need another one right um but a few things that have been in my queue on Ravelry for so long um I just hadn't found the right yarn I guess for it or I just been lazy and haven't matched them up yet (laughs) um anyway um I plan on eventually casting on the vortex shawl by pisces piscean knits i'll put a link below and a picture of the shawl so that we can see what i'm talking about um like i said this one has been in my queue for a long time and i'm kind of already planning on which yarn i want to use with it so stay tuned for more details um the next thing that I want to cast on is the Rosebud by Tin Can Knits. Oh, I love it. Um, is another one that's been in my queue for a, for a long time, and I think I have the the colorway I want to use for it. And now, the other thing that has actually been in my head to try to cast on recently is that uh, well, Jody of the Grocery Girls has a new hat pattern out. Um. I think I know what yarn I want to use with this, with this one, but we'll see how, how soon I got to it. Like I said, there are a few projects on the needles, and I'm trying to not cast on as many projects as I possibly can throughout the course of this year. Yeah, because that happened. <laughs> um, anyway, um, moving on to X's and O's. So 
this month hasn't really been big for um, our entry article writing on my blog, but I did get a couple of things done. Um, I did include my new FO entries. They're up there now, so you have them. And you can see them for yourself. Um, I did update the reading log post since the last time, but barely. Um, I haven't posted it yet. Whoops. <laughs> I think it's still in my need need to need to send out into the world pile of things to do. Um, I also have included a new uh, the read along post. I just need to add in March's totals and the chart, and then it, we will be caught up. All right. So, what you're reading and listening to, Silver? Well, let's see. I have actually been listening to quite a bit, If since you did ask so nicely. I did create a Spotify playlist, and I'm simply calling it Silver's Being Random, um, which basically has a mix of everything I have ever listened to on that, sp on that list. Um, <laughs> I will share the link down below in the, um, in the, down, in the down bar. There we go, down below. And it'll also be on the show notes. So if you'd like to, you can always check it out. I pretty much have listened to just about everything over the course of my life. So I've added it to the spreadsheet, to the spreadsheet, to the list. Um, another thing I have been listening to pretty much constantly has been the Hamilton soundtrack, um, Metallica's Ride the Lightning, and um, a hymn album that has like, about, like a few of their most popular hits on. Um, that pretty much has been what I've been listening to in my car over the past couple, like the past couple weeks to and from work. Um, let's see. Another thing that I have been listening to, um, has actually been a bunch of audio podcasts because as you do, um, is quite obviously the first one is going to be the Knit More Girls because Jasmine and Gigi are absolutely awesome and I have to keep up with them because their lives are amazing, yo. Their lives are freaking amazing. Um, I also have been listening to Is This Adulting? And Wine and Crime, because you need some comedy in your life, right? Um, I have also listened to the Outland, the official Outlander podcast that um, was mentioned by Jasmine and Gigi. Um, to It shows off all of the like technical side of the show, and it gives... Um, you know the the how this ha how this decision happened in um in the series itself. So I've actually listened up to season two, which is episode five. Oh, love it! Um, and Pleasing Terrors had an episode, so I did listen to that. Um, in a snit, I am all caught up with her. She's actually having a baseball themed KAL going on right now. I'm not really into baseball, but you can enter up to four projects in the FO thread. Ugh, I, I love this concept. I might actually participate. We will see. We will see. Um, but I did find a new podcast, actually, uh, well, because, because Steve of uh, Is This Adulting mentioned it, um, but they are absolutely awesome. It's a podcast called, oh no, Lit Class. Essentially what it is, is that these two uh, two co-hosts actually will go through a book that we had to read in Lit Class as, as you were growing up and kind of discuss the nuances of it, give a breakdown of what, you know, a summary of what the play was and a lot of like cultural um, adaptations and things like that. So they mention a lot a lot of stuff like the first episode was that Scottish play now if you don't know what that means I'm gonna put it in the down bar down there because apparently you're really not supposed to say it out loud but anyway <laughs> that's something that they go over in the in the first episode so spoiler anyway so as to what I'm reading uh, <laughs> I've been reading quite a bit considering, um, I have finished uh, an entire series by Susan Stoker. Um, the first one was called Claiming Grace. Then there was Claiming Alexis, Claiming Bailey, and Claiming Felicity. Just, yeah, 
I couldn't stop reading those, (laughs) y'all. And I also did manage to listen to uh, Drums of Autumn by Diana Gabaldon. The other books that I did finish this past month, um, they had a one-star review on my Goodreads, sorry, to the author, but um, I just sometimes don't want to mention it on the podcast even. (laughs) But anyway, as to what I am currently reading, well, I am currently listening, or I'm currently listening to The Outlandish Companion by Diana Diana Gabaldon. Wow, I should not be messing that name up now, right? Anyway, um, it's basically a, a, you know, right now I'm just listening to the breakdown of the four books, the first four books in the series. After that, they, do, I think there's a bunch of essays, but I haven't quite gotten to that part, but I just can't wait to dive in, guys. It's um, about a 14-hour read-through, so... I literally just started. I'm only like five at four hours in, something like that. Anyway, as to what I'm physically reading, I'm reading a book called A is for Alibi by Sue Grafton. I got about a chapter in and moved on to the next one on my list, um, which is uh, McFarlane's Last by Glynis Campbell. Love this. Love this book, guys. It's so cute. (laughs) Yes in Scottish accents and things like that. Love story. You know how it goes. Um, Anyway, um, like I said before, I actually will be reading through a few more of Sue Grafton's books. I just cannot read uh, mysteries for longer than like an hour before I kind of need to move on to something else. So there's my disclaimer on that, (laughs) y'all. So what you watch in silver, (laughs) again, quite a bit. Um, as to TV, I finally did manage to finish watching through the whole series of Glee. Mind you, this is actually my first watch through of the entire season, or entire series. I had watched a couple of seasons, got to the season where um, Corey had passed away, and then was like, I can't anymore. But I decided I needed to finish the series out, to be fair. Um... <laughs> The last season was, I'm going to say, was a lot of um, guest star-tastic, and it was also, like, definitely wrapping up some ends. Um, There was a couple episodes that went off the fucking deep end. Sorry, they went off the deep end (laughs) with a few episodes. Um, If you haven't seen the series, one of the episodes was Saw-themed, and I will leave it at that. Um, another series that I did watch through was called Nailed It. Now, y'all have to thank Lala of the Knit Girls for cluing me into this series. <laughs> to, it's an awesome bake show. Um, essentially, it's kind of like most other baking shows with a kind of a twist. Um, there are some home bakers that are brought in. Um, they basically get a crack at trying things that have the most amount of Pinterest fails um, and essentially the <laughs> the best baker of the worst <laughs> ends up winning and it's it's kind of kitschy and it's awesome and the host <laughs> oh my god she's hysterical I cannot she's hysterical and she's like there's different things that you would never think of putting all together that they totally put together for this show. It's absolutely awesome, guys. Sorry, I went on a little bit tangent as I was flipping the blanket because I finished a row. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, the next thing that I did watch through um, was up to season three, episode one of Outlander. I promise I will get there. I will finish watching it. I promise I will catch up probably long before the new series starts. <laughs> uh, I just feel like I only have to watch this when MPI is not home. Um, and he's been home quite a bit um, the past couple uh, weeknights, especially. Um, he He's, well, he's part-time. Anyway, um, I don't know why I feel like I have to, but there it is. Um, let's see. I also watched an episode of Fuller House, which I didn't include in my notes. So yes. Um, I also, and the last thing that I did start watching, um, was watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer from the beginning. Um, 
I'm kind of ashamed to say that this is actually my first watch through of the series. Um, I honestly, back when it was on TV proper, obviously I was kind of young, didn't know what I liked in TV shows, A, and also I watched a couple of the later episodes and uh, just did not do it for me, so I didn't watch the rest of them, and I wasn't impressed, but I'm going to give it a good, another go, um, mostly because I I am needed another series to watch after Glee was over, if I'm being honest. Um, but anyway, I did watch a few, uh, movies actually since the last time we talked. Just a few. Um, sorry, the first one that I watched was the Buffy the Slam- the, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, cause, you know, as you do before you start watching the series. I also watched a movie on Netflix called F the Prom. It came up as one of my suggested movies that I should watch. Um, still don't know why I watched it, um, even though it was recommended. And I honestly, it was all right. I kind of want that hour and a half back. But yeah, there it is. <laughs> so I've also been keeping up with a lot of my video podcaster friends as well. Um, the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. The Knit Girls. And um, I've been actually binge watching Tea and Possibilities. Um, I honestly had watched her during Vlogmas and said, hey, she's one to watch. So I started watching it from the beginning and I'm now only a month behind on her episodes. So that's always good, right? <laughs> um, now, as you do when you go to YouTube, you can't just watch what you go there for, right? Because that would be heresy. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time in the YouTube black hole, as you will. Um, a lot of random videos. Um, there's one that I'm going to mention, though, because um, it did kind of stick with me. Now, y'all know I'm a very big fan of David Tennant. Um, so apparently he had, he, did, he had done an episode of uh, Who Do You Think You Are? Ugh. Like I said, I don't really much watch those series, but with my my mom going um, in the deep end of a genealogy project that she's got going on right now, I kind of wanted to see for myself. Um, <laughs> in this episode of David Tennant, you can clearly see how much he learned about his family and um, about the history of the times and things like that. Um, I will link it below in the show notes. Um, I will link it below. All right, I'm just going to link that in the show notes so that way you can go ahead um, and see it for yourself. It's it's bloody brilliant, <laughs> you know. The more you know. Yes, yes, I've got some announcements, yo. Um, you'll love this section. Let's first go into the breakdown of the Knit Two Zero KAL that I'm hosting directly in our in our Ravelry group. Now, so you know, there's a bit of information I'm going to impart because you know, once a month. <laughs> anyway, as you have probably heard in January, I've actually decided to knit down or knit through most of my UFOs or unfinished objects this year. Um, I've got quite a few that I'd like to finally finish. Um, this KL is for anything finished from January 1st to December 31st, no matter when you start it. Um, if you'd like to play along, um, please feel free to use hashtag K20 and hashtag SDLK2Z or Z on Instagram and everywhere else. Um, just be aware you can use both one or the other. I don't care. Um, the rules are very simple. You must actually be a member of my Ravelry group. Your projects must use at least 10 grams of yarn. Okay. Um, and individual socks count unless you finish the pair. Um, if it helps, one pair will only count once. Just so you know, you can enter one sock and I'm good to go with that. Um, basically, any project that you finish in 2018 will count. Um, it's not just Ravelry crafts like crochet and knitting. Um, you can include anything from your scrapbooking projects, your latch hooking, quilting, sewing, needlepoint, even holiday baking. Um, I've jokingly said you can include, you know, cleaning up stuff. Like, that's finishing things, right? 
Um, I just ask that if it's not a Ravelry craft that you actually take pictures before and after and use that in the same post so that way I can see progress, that kind of thing. Um, so you know poly dipping is allowed in other KALs and is actually even encouraged. Um, <laughs> we do have a few prizes that are available. <laughs> Um, and so I'm going to preface this by saying if there's any makers out there that would like to go ahead and donate any prizes, please feel free to PM me directly on Ravelry. I am SilverLuna2112. What has already been donated, there's going to be 12 individual um, $10 or under pattern of the winner's choice directly on Ravelry. Um, I will be drawing three every quarter, so one, uh, one set every three months. Um, there is also going to be an individual pattern by Java Pearl Designs given away per quarter as well, so a total of four. There's also going to be a set of cupcake stitch markers, and a set of sheep. Let's try that again, and a set of sheep stitch markers by Ann Tudor. So both of those are actually donated directly by Ann Tudor herself. Oh, they're absolutely gorgeous, guys. Um, and also, it was donated from the Knitting Broomstick was a wonderful Outlander bag as well as an awesome teacup bag. These bags are absolutely gorgeous. I can, I'm jealous of whoever wins these, yo. <laughs> um, there was also a two skein size bag by Molly Klein Designs uh, that's simply keep calm and craft on. <laughs> absolutely love this bag too guys i know it's a running theme but i just i really do i i i can't um and also what was another thing that was donated by molly klein is a set of pizza stitch markers as well i love these stitch markers guys <laughs> now there will be other prizes to be determined and will be announced as soon as they arrive and like I mentioned, prizes will be drawn once a quarter, so every three months. So make sure to post your FOs as soon as you finish them. All right, so new this month. I have been teasing for the past couple months that there will be a grand prize involved. And that will be drawn directly at the end of the year. Now, this grand prize has a few different components. Um, if it doesn't make sense, I'm going to try to break it down in the Ravelry group as well as the, the podcast notes as well. Um, so you know what will be included in this grand prize. It's a, actually, to be honest, all three of these are your choice. So <laughs> the uh, first choice you will have is a bag of your choice from one of my favorite bag marker, uh, bag makers, sorry. It may be a sock size uh, bag from either the Knitting Broomstick from Slip Stitch Studios or from Molly Klein Designs, yo. You get your choice. <laughs> So it's awesome. Um, and, and so also what you will have a choice of is a set of stitch markers from either Molly Klein Designs and Tudor or from Wee Ones, just so you know. And the last thing that will be included in this package for you is a is, is a gift certificate from Miss Babs Yarn Company. I'll put the exact amountage because I forgot to write it down. I'm so bad. But the, you'll get this gift certificate directly from Miss Babs themselves. All right, and as I mentioned before, if you are a maker and would like to donate prizes for this KAL, please PM me directly, and I will put it right into the right into the prize list, right into the prize bin, so to speak. <clears throat> so we had some FOs in the month of March. Yes, yes, we did. So congratulations to our March finishers, Moe's Crochet. Andrew CMC. Congratulations, ladies. All right. I'm actually going to include a slideshow here of all of the projects that were finished in quarter one. It's a little bit of a video, so I will include a timestamp.